guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Jeff Godbold with Godbold Exotics. I'm here with my friend uh, Glenn Brooks with Glenn Reptiles. I uh, wanted to uh, talk to Glenn. Glenn's got a lot of unique stuff uh, that he works with. Um, having been over to his place a few times before, um, I thought that it would be really cool to get over here and talk to Glenn about a couple species that he's been keeping for a while. Um, the first one I wanted to talk about is uh, Malagasy cat eye snakes. I've had these guys for a few years now. Um, when I first uh, came in, ran into this species, I was on Fauna Classifieds many years ago, and I stumbled into one I'd never seen before, and I was fascinated by oh, man, those are cool. their color, um, their cat-like eyes, uh, their diamond-shaped heads, um, and their incredibly mellow nature. Um, and so I ended up ordering this one that was a wild caught. Uh, it was young and uh, I had it for about a year or a year and a half. And it was not a great feeder on frozen thawed. And uh, I didn't like to do much live. I just didn't have easy access to it. Uh -huh. And so I ended up um, uh, uh, selling him and I regretted it ever since. And so then I thought, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get another one now. Once I got more into right. it, I'm gonna get another one. But I'm gonna try to get a captive-born one, um, so that it's more likely to, to feed more readily and it's more likely to breed more readily. And so I looked and couldn't find them for a long time. Finally went on to iHerb mm -hmm. and looked up the species, which is. What is the, the species? Well, Malagasy cat-eyed snakes. Oh, um, oh, gotcha. What is yeah. the? These are Madagascar. Scarof Madagascarophus culabrinus. Yeah. Okay. We believe, I, that's the most likely. Um, there's there's a couple of subspecies there. Right. And because of um, imports, it's a little hard to know exactly which of the subspecies it is. We, we I formed a Facebook group for these guys. Um, oh yeah, yeah I think go, I remember that. Yeah. If you go to Malagasy cat-eyed snakes. Um, on Facebook, there's about 80 of us, uh, people all around the world. <laughs> a 80, whole 80. 80 all around the world. Um, yeah, and uh, and w there's some discussion about some of those kinds of details and different, uh, there's a couple of different color phases. Right. Um, and uh, there's some debate as to what the color phases are, and I've heard different things about people saying they were azanthic or... Um, so there's only two that I know of, right? Well, uh, that is going to be a topic of debate on the Facebook page when I have a little more time. Well, I'm I'm coming from ignorance, so I'm just I'm just saying like uh, traditionally people call this coloration a uh, a, a yellow. Do you uh, have one I could hold? Yeah. Uh, I don't call this yellow. I call it gold because I think it's more gold than it is yellow. Um, and interestingly, they call another phase silver. It isn't really silver at all. It's really brown. Yeah, it's kind and of a brownish so, yeah, color. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Actually, I do have um, that face. These guys are so cool. You know what's funny about these is, I, you know, I'm not a colubrid guy. Most of my experience has always been with um, with uh, by, uh, pythons and boas, but um, I thought that these guys were boiga, and so yeah. that's what was the first thing I thought was like. You know, because in some some ways the head kind of resembles Boiga, and so oh, yeah. I and thought, the eyes. yeah, and the eyes, and so I thought that they were Boiga, but you know, come to find out that yeah, in many ways they're the poor man's Boiga, uh, right? <laughs> and uh, if you if you don't like being bit, <laughs> they're they're a really good option because they don't ever bite you. Look at that; those eyes are just so cool. The other nice thing about these guys is they uh, how. They don't get very big, so if that's something that you like, um, they're uh, they don't get quite as big as like say a corn snake. These are adults. Um, this is an adult female who laid eggs this year. And I'm pretty sure she's gravid with a second clutch right now. Wow. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of a bulge in her yeah. midsection there. Yeah. And this is my largest female that I got, um, and. Um, She's opaque. You yeah, know. she's. I believe she's in her pre-lay shed for her second clutch. But um, uh, that's a, you know, they don't get that much bigger than this right here. Okay. 
Now is that when she sheds out, she is she She's gonna be bright gold. Okay, so she's the color of these guys yeah. then. Yeah. All right. Now as as just from hatchling to adult, are these guys you've already said they're pretty docile. Are they are they pretty hard to feed or like you know, they take rodents pretty readily? Um one thing you have to come to grips with when you get these guys is they sometimes like to go on hunger strikes. They are very comfortable going three to six months without eating. That drove me crazy. It's one of the reasons I sold that first one is because it drove me crazy. Um, I kept worrying about them. Uh, the males especially will go long periods of time without eating. And uh, one of the things I found is that um, when they're hungry, they'll eat. And so you got to be comfortable with them just not be, eating for a while. Just be patient, huh? Um, but I, I have developed a little bit of a technique, um, which is pretty simple. And I just take the snake, uh -huh. hold the snake, put a mouse in, in its, basically in its mouth. I rub the mouse to get its mouth open. Uh -huh. And once you put the mouse in its mouth, it will grab it with its rear fangs. And you can set it down and they'll almost always eat it so and so if they're if they're not eating if they'll if they go three weeks or four weeks without eating i'll usually do that and they will probably nine times out of ten eat it so um and, cool. I, and by the way i do that with babies that's how i get babies started all right did you want to put these up i didn't know if you wanted to put these up first yeah or... they probably don't go anywhere <laughs> just in case <laughs> yeah so um so those are adults. Let me show you a yearling that I produced last year so you get an idea of their growth. This is my only holdback from last year. I held on to one male because uh, I only have one adult male, but you can see he's a nice gold color as well. Oh, cool. So that's one year old. And he'll breed next year. Wow. Do you do anything special to get these guys to breed? Like, do they need to be uh, cycled? drastically or you uh, just kind of they need to be dr uh, cycled mildly mildly um, so not uh, you know if not really cold but still you, they need a, a cycling temperature um, for uh, to have a, a good production um, but uh, I generally only cycle them for three or four weeks mm -hmm. and uh, put them in a low temperature you know of maybe uh, 60 um, okay. And so here's a, uh, oh, wow. this one's maybe a week old, two weeks old. Wow. And that one's going to be gold just like this one yes, is. Yes, yes. Big change. So that's huh? the difference in a year. How large of clutches do they have? Um, generally four to ten. Four um, to ten eggs? Yeah. Uh, so these guys are egg, egg layers yeah. then? Most people get about six eggs per clutch. Okay. Um, my big female, I think, gave me eight this year. Nice. Um, and uh, and they tend to uh, double clutch pretty easily. Um, really? Yeah. And I You're was, selling me on these. I oh, can't. I cannot add anything else. Uh, well, you know, it's so funny because I just find them as uh, some of the best pet snakes someone could have. And nobody knows about them. Nobody knows about them. Yeah. And so as one of my goals when I acquired these is to propagate the information get it out there start the Facebook page get people talking about it and uh, I try to post a lot of pictures on Facebook so people go what is that thing and, right and uh, starting to get people interested in this species but so for for most viewers that aren't that familiar with snakes snakes generally pretty much whatever species you're talking you're talking about they're fairly head shy if you notice he and I have been just holding these guys and we've been you know very close to the head touching the head and these guys haven't been uh, usually, if you touch a snake's head, it, it triggers a defense reaction pretty quickly. These guys are just so placid. Like, you know, saying that these are a great pet snake, I, I believe it because they stay small. They're not hard to keep. Um, they're not aggressive by any any means, and they're really pretty snakes. Now, this guy's about ten days out of the egg. Wow. And he's shed and eaten twice. There you go. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh man, these are so cool. I uh, was able to track a pair down um, by contacting people who had them listed on iHerb and um, got a captive bred pair, which I thought was gonna be the secret to getting them to feed and breed. 
and that's exactly what happened. I just, uh, I do keep them together. Right. Um, I always keep two moist hides in there so that they can go to different temperature moist hides. Um, they are always in the moist, moist hide, except they'll come out to go to the bathroom. Right. And then they'll go back in. Um, so I think it's it's a good good thing to have in there. I think sure. they tend to not like it as much when they don't have that and they dry up. Right. Um, they don't have to have it based on where they're found. In Madagascar, it is the most common snake found. Really? Yeah. And it's one of those, one of the, that's a fact that once I realized that, I thought, well, they, they've got to be easy to breed. They're the most common snake yeah, in Madagascar. Yeah, they're prolific. We just have to figure out, you know, what conditions they want. And they're found all over Madagascar, so there's a wide variety. They'll put up with a wide variety of conditions. Well, apparently you've figured it out because you've produced them the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, they've been, it's been very productive for me. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in Malagasy Cat Eye Snakes. If you haven't had a chance, uh, check them out, or you can uh, contact Glenn on Facebook on Glenn Reptiles, send him a private message. Um, I want to thank you for having me over. Absolutely. And um, if you haven't had a chance yet, hit the like button and hit subscribe down below. And you can reach me on Facebook at Godbolt Exotics, or you can reach, my, reach me through my website at www.godboltexotics.com or email me at godboltexotics at gmail.com. All right, guys. Thanks again.